So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So listen, everybody knows I love a good karma. Instant karma. It don't have to be instant, but karma in general. I love a good karma story, bro. I do. I do. I can't lie. I'm that kind of guy. I love a good karma story. Because you shouldn't have been doing what you, what you was doing for karma to have to come and find you. You know what I'm saying? I love that. I can't, I can't help it. So it's been a minute since I did some type of karma story. But this one here, the title just reeked of karma in it. You know what I'm saying? It just jumped out at me. So it was like, the, the title of the video is, These Men Attacked the Old Man. First of all, why are you, why are you attacking old people, bro? Why? Leave them alone. Period. That pissed me off, made me mad already. It said, these men attacked the old man, but they didn't know he was not alone. So, I don't know how, I don't know what, whatever it is, whatever it is, we about to find out and check this story out. So, if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button, join the fam, all right? And, uh, you know, every now and then, Halloween's over, so they ain't got their mask on, but they're still in the shadow. So, we got to acknowledge these haters, you know what I mean? Real quick, moment of silence for the haters. That's enough. Now, run the likes up. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Let's go. Disclaimer. These men attacked the old man, but they didn't know he was not alone there. Oh. Oliver Jetton was an elderly gentleman who cherished animals and the natural world. No visit to the city was made by him during his whole life, not even once during his childhood. He was pleased with his tiny house on the outskirts of the woodland. Hold on, hold on. I'm still tripping. Hold on. Let me go back. This must have been a younger photo of him because this dude don't look elderly at all. Was anybody else saying that? This, like, I couldn't even hear what was going on because they said, oh, man. And I'm like, where? Where? But this must be a younger photo. I, 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 it has to be. World. No visit to the city was made by him during his whole life. Not even once during his childhood. He was pleased with his tiny house on the outskirts of the woodland, where he had chosen to live. At his happiest, Oliver was in the woods amid the towering trees and plants, where the river ran clear and leisurely, and where he felt the most alive, completely in his element. He made his home in the jungle. As a result, he had committed his whole life to preserving it. Hearing about Oliver and his devotion to safeguarding the forest and its species, from animals to plants alike, as well as assisting tourists in reaching their goal and not being disoriented in the forest, the governor decided to pay Oliver a personal visit and express his gratitude, while also surprising him with a surprise present. The governor came to Oliver's door and was welcomed in by Oliver who served him tea and informed him that the governor want to express his gratitude to Oliver for his efforts in safeguarding the forest and its inhabitants. He stated that if Oliver accepted, he would appoint Oliver as a forest ranger and would pay him a monthly salary, as well as other advantages associated with the position. Oliver was delighted to accept. Old Oliver was often compared to Mowgli by the locals, who thought he was a jungle lad, a son of the forest, and a buddy of both cheetahs and bears, with the exception of Oliver, who dressed more modestly. So, all right, and I think I think I see where this is going a little bit. Like, some men attacked him, and, and an animal, it was what it's looking like, an animal going to come out and, and save him. Because they already done called him Mowgli. They said he just, he felt the most free amongst the wild and helping the animals and different things like that. So I'm pretty sure he's built somewhat of a bond with, with the animal, which is super, super dope to me. You know what I'm saying? I love animals. I'm a dog lover. I love animals. So to see or to hear that go down, and if that's the way it plays out, <laughs> oh, it's going to be the best karma video yet. Oliver chuckled and brushed off the joke with a good-natured demeanor. I'm not a friend of lions, no matter how much I wish I were, mm -mm. old Oliver would remark of the lions. A day will come when Oliver would meet and become friends with the newborn leopard, and he would have never imagined it. The sound of gunshots could be heard once. A leopard? How do you become friends with a leopard? Uh-uh. And he would have never imagined it. The sound of gunshots could be heard one evening around sunset, 
as Oliver was making his way through the woodland, checking that everything was in order. Oliver's heartbeats raced, and adrenaline flowed through his veins as he realized he had to get to the source of the noise as soon as possible. Guns and guns were strictly prohibited in the forest, and everyone was aware of this. The person who started the fire had to be a hunter. In order to run as quickly as possible, Oliver adjusted his rifle. After reaching his location, he came upon four hunters carrying a wounded leopard, which was visibly bleeding and in need of medical attention. The hunters were also attempting to capture the leopard's young leopard, which was waging a fierce battle against them. Stop! I command you to halt and leave the injured leopard alone in the name of the law. They were yelled at by Oliver. And leave a substantial sum of money behind? Do you think we're naive or what? One of the hunters responded in kind. The man who was attempting to capture the newborn leopard was bitten by the leopard, and the man was forced to retreat. To take advantage of the situation, Oliver fired a shot into the air. In fear, the hunters abandoned the injured leopard and fled to their truck, where they sped off quickly, since Oliver was aiming his bullets at the truck's wheels. The leopard was still alive as the thieves rushed away, so Oliver went to check on her. It was the baby's mother, and she was in a lot of pain. Oliver was concerned that he wouldn't make it in time to see the doctor to rescue her. The infant knelt near its mother and rubbed a bridge of its nose. The mother licked his cheeks, which he found adorable. She was on her deathbed. Oliver was enraged because he hadn't been able to apprehend the hunters or spare his mother from death. Consequently, he took upon himself the responsibility of caring for the infant until he was old enough to care for himself. Oliver brought the infant with him to his house. He washed it and gave it some milk and meat that he had on hand. He placed a nest of blankets beside the fireplace for the leopard to sleep in. Days passed and Oliver treated the animal as if it were a pet, taking good care of it. Oliver was a... Yo, 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 yo. I know this sounds dope and everything, y'all. But please don't... <laughs> don't be doing this, man. Because my heart is beating now for this dude. Because all, all I can think of is the future. You know what I mean? This animal is going to grow up and it's a wild animal. It has the instincts of... And we've heard this story before. You know what I mean? Remember the monkey story that the people had the monkey in. And one day he just went crazy and started tearing the face up of of the lady's friend and and ended up you know what i mean just just y'all come on man chill bro i've seen I, we've seen this time and time again and although sometimes it does work out in your favor the amount of times that it doesn't just outweighs it bro just don't just don't man i'm not trying to hear no more stories of people getting taken out by these wild animals that they thought that were their friends attracted to the leopard because it was calm and kind it enjoyed playing a lot However, it was careful not to injure Oliver with its claws at any point. After a while, Oliver determined that the animal had reached the appropriate age to begin hunting on its own. He began taking it into the forest and teaching it how to hunt with his bow and arrow. When the leopard was waiting behind the bushes to grab a rabbit during one of their hunting sessions, it sped off and leaped on the bunny, causing it to flee. The leopard managed to capture the rabbit, but a sharp branch wounded the leopard's paw and arm. The cut was deep, and it left a visible imprint on the skin. It would leave scars across his fur, but this might be a positive thing, since Oliver will be able to identify his leopard, even if there were thousands of them around. After a few days, the leopard decided it was time to depart and live on his own in the forest among his other leopards. Oliver returned him to the location where he had been discovered and bid him farewell. Oliver was followed by the leopard for half of the journey, and Oliver returned him again and time again until it remained at the location where Oliver released it. Keep your health and strength, big boy, and keep my name in mind. I'll miss you a lot, Oliver stated, this while kissing the leopard's head and patting it on the head one final time. Then he walked away. Oliver's bones began to deteriorate as the years passed, making him appear older and weaker. He continued to carry out his responsibilities as a forest ranger. There are two main reasons why people aren't spending as much time in the forest these days. The first was that winter was approaching and the weather was becoming cold and severe, with the wind being harsh and merciless. The second reason was that there had been reports of a group of convicts who had managed to escape from a nearby jail and had taken refuge in the nearby woods.
Mm. According to rumors, the escaped inmates were extremely deadly, and some individuals said they killed for amusement. Whatever it was, the police advised anyone who observed the unusual activity from any group of individuals to contact them. In the midst of gathering wood to fill his fireplace, Oliver came upon a group of three guys along the river and stopped. They were yelling and shouting at each other and didn't notice him approaching. They were debating on which way to travel and where they should go next. That's fantastic. We've gotten ourselves into a bind, and as a result of your efforts, one of them, the tallest of the three, yelled at his friend from across the room. This is not my fault. I advised you to turn right, but you didn't listen. It was your stubbornness that brought us to this point, the other said. He was ready to strike his companion when he noticed Oliver. You son of a, the tallest said before stopping himself, Oliver should have seen that as a warning sign, but he was a good guy and didn't think anything of it at the time. Excuse me, may I be of assistance to you? Oliver was the one who informed. Oh. So he probably out there, he probably wasn't even aware. He could have possibly not even been aware that the convicts had escaped. I would imagine he would, though. You know what I mean? When you think about it, you got to know what's going on out there. If somebody's in your woods, your woods, as you would probably proclaim them, since you probably grew up there and spent your entire life there, you would you would have to know these guys fit the description of three convicts that love to kill, bro. You just can't be walking up to people all nice and neighborly, <laughs> hi neighbor. No, you can't do that. Not when three people are on the loose like this. Wired. Thank you so much, says the other. If you like, he got he got woods. He he needs street smarts. He got wood smarts. See his his street smarts ain't kicking in. Oliver was the one who inquired. Thank you so much, says the other. If you'd be so kind as to show us the way out of the woods, please, the third guy said, addressing the other two men. The answer from Oliver was, of course, it's not a problem at all. You simply have to follow the river and turn to the left when you reach the two streams. Thank you so much, said the author. They departed and Oliver returned to his house. Oliver woke in the middle of the night to the sound of someone banging on his door. For a while, he assumed it was just the wind but the noise became more frequent, so he got up and opened the door. It was the same group of three guys from before. Oh, you're the one. It's the grandfather from before. Thank you, God. We're under the impression that we would be on the list forever. Oliver let them into the house because it was dark and chilly outdoors, and they appeared to be disoriented. They explained to Oliver that they'd gotten the instructions jumbled up and had been disoriented. They walked till they noticed smoke in the distance, which they followed and ended up at Oliver's cabin. His fireplace was the source of the smoke. Oliver said he'd been delighted to have them spend the night in his cottage, and that once the sun came... Oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God. Come on, man. No. Oh. Came out, and the weather became pleasant. They may go if they desired. They expressed their gratitude to the elderly gentleman for his kindness. Oliver loaded their fireplace with wood and prepared meals for them, and the four of them ate together as a group. Afterwards, he served them tea and tucked them into their beds with blankets and coverings for the night. After getting up in the morning, Oliver went downstairs to prepare breakfast for his visitors, but he was unable to locate them. He was also unable to locate the majority of his valuable possessions, his rifle, his money, his golden chain, his watch, and everything else he held dear were all taken away by the three gentlemen. Just, Oliver was in... Just robbed him blind, man. You know what I mean? That dude, you can already tell he's the nicest type of dude out there. Give you the shirt off his back, which he did. Fed you. Gave you probably clothes to wear. He that was there. Like, that's some... It's, man, it's people like out there like that, bro. Bring back the, the punishment video. See, this is what I'm talking about. If you ain't watched the, the video I put out with the punishments, th this is why, right here. This is why. Raged, thinking that these men must have been the convicts who had fled from prison. And since he was so generous and naive in his assistance, they took advantage of his generosity and humiliated him. He's not going to let them get away. Oliver put on his heavy coat and his knife and headed out to look for them in the forest. He had the benefit of knowing the woods by heart, so he'd be able to locate them quickly. 
The crooks didn't go very far before Oliver tracked them down and they were battling once more. Oliver took advantage of the situation and swung his knife at one of them, and when it struck him in the leg, he screamed and collapsed to the ground. The other two headed off in the direction of Oliver. He engaged in a battle with them, but it was a two-on-one battle. He hit them with several punches and kicks, but they were stronger than him and managed to take him out. The first two men were holding him hard while the third man was preparing to fire the rifle at him. Oliver's gun, which was such a cruel irony that he died with his own weapon. The man fired, but the shot did not target Oliver. Instead, something hit the man quickly, causing him to shoot his companion. Oliver was on the lookout for a large leopard that was chewing the arm of the man who was holding the gun. Because he had a scar on his claw and arm, he identified him as Oliver's leopard. It returned to rescue Oliver's life. The leopard then sprang onto the third man's back and struck him. Because of the animal's onslaught, the cr You know what I would be doing if I was Oliver? Sitting back, put my hands behind my head, just kick back, cross my legs, and just let that leopard tear you to pieces, bro. You deserve it. You deserve it. You robbed me. Oh, this is good karma right here. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm screaming. We in the woods. You can scream as loud as you want to. Nobody's gonna hear you. <laughs> oh, oh man, I'd be out there chilling, kick back. Oh man, I just need a glass of sweet tea to watch this movie. Ah. Crooks were rendered immobile. Oliver got out his rope and tied the three criminals together as tightly as he possibly could. The leopard came up to Oliver and nudged his leg as if he were begging to be stroked as in the old days, according to Oliver. Oliver ruffled its fur and wrapped his arms around him. You did a great job saving my life and apprehending the perpetrators. You've done a good job of growing up. I'm really pleased with you. Oliver summoned the police to the scene in order to apprehend the perpetrators. They would be sent to a medical facility, but it wasn't just any hospital. It was the prison hospital to which they belonged. Thanks for watching. <laughs> That's what you get. That that is what you get. Talk about some karma. <laughs> Talk about some karma, bro. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this story. Um, I just don't like older people getting taken advantage of, man. You know what I'm saying? We all got or have had grandparents at some point in time, if you were lucky, and. Can you imagine somebody taking advantage of your grandmother or grandfather, bro? Knowing they're the sweetest people in the world, the nicest people in the world like that. Like, nah, y'all got every bit. My only, my only gripe with this story is that the leopard didn't kill you. Man, he ain't chew you up, poop you out later on down the stream somewhere in the, further in the woods. That was it. I can't stand stuff like that, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? But all is well that ends well. So y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought of this story right here, man. Like I said, I came across it and it just oozed of instant karma. So I like it. I liked it. All right. So till the next reaction, I'm gone. Y'all stay solid. A. Hey.